Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed and just doing an update on what my garden is doing or in other words, what have I done with all my castings. So what we have right here in front of me is my tomato garden. I've got some of the things that are still in pots sitting on the pavers in here right now just because I um, am doing a little bit of succession planning and some things are ready before the other things are ready to get out. So let's take a look here. Try not to go too fast to make you dizzy. This is my new raised bed that I made out of um, pavers or concrete blocks. Uh, yeah, that was a, ended up being a trip to the doctor. Thank God for tramadol. Uh, so right now what we have in here is onions and garlic. And so they are doing lovely. Um, looking at this pot, I have a pot of chives, which actually came from my neighbor's yard. Thank you, neighbors. Moving on to this, which is my old pallet garden, which will this year become one of these. I've pre-ordered the trim at all. And right now what I have is I have some um, radishes, beets, and turnips. But the new thing that I wanted to show you was that Grandpa Pepper has been planted outside in the ground. Let's get a little closer and have a look at him. So, yeah, he hasn't been planted in the ground for a couple of years. I left him in his, I think he left him in his pot, maybe one year. So he hasn't been in the ground for at least a year. So I thought this was a good year for it. He was looking a little bit not right. A um, little heat stress from being in my new greenhouse. That is a learning curve that I have yet to master. But, so I still have... I still have the uh, little bit of radishes there, the beets and turnips are definitely not done yet. So the first space that opened up went to Papa Pepper. All right, let's go take a look and see what the rest of the yard is doing. All right, so over here in my potted edible garden is my currants, gooseberries, and um, figs. Unfortunately, my fig from last year didn't make it over the winter, even though I put it on the porch. So I'm starting over. I doubt I'll get any figs off of those little guys this year. And barking dogs. Over here are my latest. Those are the gooseberries. Uh, one is red, one is pink. In, from what I understand, genetically, gooseberries and currants are the same thing, just different size berries and different flavors. Over here are my second year black currants. And if we get in close, maybe we can see that there are going to be gooseberries this year. Nope, not gooseberries, and currants. There you go, you can see a little couple of them right there. And then trailing on to the side of the yard are my grapes. So they're waking up, kind of squeeze in here. Um, so there they are. If you've ever wondered what they look like when they're newly clustering out, right there and there. I bought bags, little mesh bags this year, so hopefully I will get to eat the grapes and the animals that live in the neighborhood don't get to eat my grapes. So that is how the grapes are doing. Now we'll move around to the other side. Alrighty, well here is my rhubarb and asparagus and also some lemon mint. Um, this is what happens when it's not happy. It bolts. So I'm going to have to go in there and take all those stupid flowers out. And this is also what happens when you forget that you have asparagus and it goes to flower. So, more food for the worms. Alright, moving along. Okay, and this is my poplar oak bed, which has daylilies. If you uh, looked at the um, update from early spring, this had really pretty daffodils and tulips. And now the hostas and the daylilies are waking up. And you can hear the little birdies chirping. 
Alright, so I'm just going to walk forward and somebody's poor beat up old truck is going by. I remember the days when I didn't have money to replace the muffler system in my car, so I try to be less judgmental about the people who drive around without a good one. So this is my latest addition in trying to get rid of my yard and replace it with interesting things. Um, that in the middle there is a Porcythia. Didn't bloom this year, it's too little. Maybe next year. Moving on to uh, the number two red bud. Uh, also the neighbors, uh, different neighbor, Lynn neighbor. She gave me those red buds. I'm not really sure why they're losing their bark. If anybody knows why they're losing their bark, put that on below. Trees seem healthy enough. Uh, then of course I have my coral bells, hostas, and some daylilies. And of course, if anybody has a trumpet vine, you will see the telltale signs of the cost of owning a trumpet vine. Um, I still think it's worth it. The hummingbirds are super happy about it. And uh, as soon as this car goes away, I will... There you go. So this right here is a trumpet vine tree, and then I have a volunteer red bud there. It's going to have to go. I might air layer it out. I don't know. So then, moving over to this part of the house, I've started tearing things out, which means it's kind of in transition at this point. The tall things are Rose of Sharon, the short things are Daylilies, and the shorter things are Chocolate Mint. Yeah, I know, I planted mint in my yard on purpose. It's lovely when you're mowing the grass. I am going to come and get a close-up on my favorite Transcendatia, also called Widow's Tears. That is called Schwandenberg Blue. Um, so if you want to buy it, that's not a filtered color. That's a real color. Darn near Pepsi Can Blue. Beautiful. And then, of course, I have my Resurrection Lilies, a.k.a. Belladonna Lilies, that always look like hell for most of the year. Then there will be more Transcendatia, and I'm not sure which color this is. This is either the white or the Hawaiian Punch, which is kind of a pinky purple. Looks like my irises are just about to do their thing. And then as we move across, um, I can either lie to myself and say they're pre-bonsais, or I just haven't got around to killing the random trees in my yard. And here is my Kim lilac. She's a miniature lilac. Let me back up. Can I get some scale here? And I was really sad when everybody's standard lilacs were um, blooming because I didn't have anything to smell in my yard. But right now, theirs are all gone, and mine is blooming, and she smells fabulous. All right, and here is my big apple tree. I don't know if it'll be a good apple year or not. Only half the tree had uh, any flowers on it, so we'll see. Moving along into the fence side garden, I have um, more evidence of trumpet vine, uh, Rosa Sharon, which is almost as bad as the trumpet vine, and my newest addition to my garden, which was a gift from one of my friends, Bill. Uh, he was moving and thought of me when he had to dig up all of his hostas. He said, do you want them? Hell yeah, I want them turn down a hosta? Holy cow, no, that's like an orchid or a free worm bin or who turns down hostas? And then of course then there's the regular hostas in here that are still in intermixed with the fading tulips and daffodils. The white flowers on the ground are called Orangotholum. Uh, when it gets to be July here, it is the only thing that looks decent in my yard. It's not really grass. It's the the grass part of the Orangotholum. All right, let me move to the next bed. Here's a quick look of the pug side of the garden. Um, <laughs> pugs included. Uh, this is where I'm expanding this year. I've put in some new hostas. Let's let's go take a closer look at that. 
So, like I said, I, I can't turn up a hosta, and, and these weren't free. Actually, let me, I'll do this when I come back around. Okay, well, this is my sun garden slash herb garden, and um, some of my viewers know that my, my dad died in January, so this is his car, which is snuggled right up against where I'd like to be shooting. Um, but let me, let me look around and see if I can't get a better look. Uh, so these are the tiger lilies that are coming up, and some day lilies, and of course some pre-bonsais. Wink, wink. Okay, looking at it from the other direction, you can tell I have some weeding to do. Um, also, have some mojitos to make. That is apple mint that has lost its mind going through there. Um, uh, it was new last year, and it is just gone wild. In fact, it's gone wild right out the edge. Uh, underneath of there are other things, which I think I showed in the other video. But moving over here, the first iris of the year is a yellow iris, um, which I call my Dennis iris. That's the person that gave it to me. And then down here, I have some pineapple mint. Again, the lavender died from last year. I don't know why I can't keep a lavender. Um, there should be some other herbs starting in there. They're just not quite woke up yet. And those are some little baby red buds, which may be gifts for somebody. And then again, they also might be pre bonsais. Hard to tell with me. Moving over here, I bought some new daylilies. These are going to be a purpley color. Um, I moved my roses from the front of the house, which has become way too shady, over here to a very sunny spot, um, and so hopefully they do well. And I thought the daylilies and the, uh, they're a Joseph's Coat Climbing Rose, which changes color from yellow to orange to red, or red, orange to yellow, I can't remember which, but they, they turn three different colors, and so it looks really cool when they do that. All right, hold on, I'll bring you back when I come around through the fence. All right, so this is the left, no, this is the right side. I don't know, east, north, west, whatever. So those are my faux pugs over there. And you can see the um, hostas are definitely waking up. The ligulera, which is the red leaves here, is waking up. The um, ferns are definitely waking up. So I put in some stepping stones, some more stepping stones, so that I can get closer and, and take care of things, because it is a little bit of a pain in the butt. So as you look down here, if you're a hosta lover, um, this is what is called strip tease. That's the brand name. I didn't make it. Um, it's really kind of cool. It's uh, it's a bigger hosta than I thought it was going to be. It, it was actually pretty small for a couple of years, but um, here for scale, here's my hand. It's a good size hosta. Um, here are some of my original hostas that I've been carrying with me from um, every place I've ever lived. So they have been called Jeski or Jeski <laughs> because that's the name of the person I got them from. Um, I don't know what their real name is. Here's the Ligulera. I'm not sure if it gets quite enough sun. These things can get really super huge. I actually started growing them because I like the leaves for doing my cement projects. But as of yet, they've yet to get big enough to make it to the cement projects. And as we come around here, you can see here that my... God, what are those called? I don't know, but they smell really awesome. I wish there was a perfume based on those. But I'm going to continue on my little path I've put here. This, this is a big garden. You're probably thinking, holy hell, this is a big garden. It is a big garden. Um, but it's not work to me. I enjoy it. Otherwise, yeah, this would be hell for somebody who doesn't like to mess with the garden. Um, in this particular light, these hostas that I got from uh, somebody I worked with, um, these are huge. Let's see if I can put my hand next to them. 
The color does look a little brighter. They're not quite as yellowy as they're appearing to be in the video. They're more of a lime green. But yeah, more hostas. Got a little uh, natural or native crane spill happening here. Future Transcendacea coming out. In fact, these hostas have gone so big they've eaten the pavers that are my stepping stones. So let's see. A um, little bit of uh, allium still left. Try not to step on them as I go by. Uh, there's the thistle, which is the uh, plant of Scotland, of which I am Scottish, and so I tend to leave it there. Uh, it keeps people from tromping through my garden with flip flops, I'll tell you that much. Um, so yeah, there's more ferns, more hostas, more pre bonsais. Have some columbine growing here that's just about finishing up. They are uh, friends of the hummingbirds, so even though they have their flowers upside down, I, I do love them. So here's another one of my hostas. Uh, no tag. Yeah, it's either Kirk or Vulcan. I can't remember which one. Yeah, that's that's its real name. I'm also a Trekkie, so you'll have that. And then, let's see what else is going on. Here is some uh, wild ginger. It grows uh, native around here in the woodlands. So you can tell just the last of the tulips here. More cranes bill. Back there, there's a bunch of daylilies. They grow, I mean, I don't even usually get weeds. They grow so thick. Those are like the roadside daylilies, the orange ones. And then, let's see. That's an actual bonsai, you can tell, because it's in, in a pot. The uh, little pansies are hanging on. I am not sure what kind of bug this is that has taken hold of my my little tree, but I don't like it. Uh, if anybody knows what that is, put that in the comments below. Um, and one of my favorite hostas, um, it is just amazing. It is yellow, almost banana yellow, and huge. I love this thing. I can't wait for it to divide so I can spread it around, spread the love around. I'm also kind of tiptoeing through the the trans or the orangotholum here because the bees love it. I try not to get stung by a bee. All right, got my little color ferns there, and then more more different kinds of hostas. These are supposed to be the blue hostas, but I think whatever the soil is supposed to be to make them really blue, I must not have it. And then more of the columbine. These are still a hybrid. They're not the old-fashioned kind. And they just mix themselves around my garden. I don't plant them. And then they come in in different colors. So whatever I planted at one point is not what I have now. They just keep mutating or crossbreeding or whatever. Okay. So this is part of my past concrete project. Those are burdock leaves that I um, cast into concrete and then painted to be kind of a little psychedelic. Um, I usually have them fashioned to be a like a waterfall, but I haven't got there yet this year. This um, below here is toad lily. It's my first time growing it. It's spreading, so I'm super psyched about that. Um, I honestly didn't expect it to live. Uh, these are my new hostas from last year. They are called Loyalist. They're twisty ones. And if I can do this with one hand, this is pavers I made out of elephant ear leaves. 
they actually go this full way, this whole way down here. That was for the pugs so they could walk behind. But you can't see them because I haven't cleaned out all the leaves yet. Okay, so then we have this year's new hostas. These are called Wolverine. Sensing a trend, anybody? Um, they're supposed to get to be 10 inch long strappy leaves which I'm going to just love. I love variegated and I love different textures and, and shapes. So that'll be great. And then another set of new hostas. These are called praying hands and they're supposed to be rolled up like that. Normally you see leaves that are rolled up like this and it's a sign of dehydration or some sort of pest. But that is in fact the way that they are. And then over here, I have another new hosta. It's called Wrinkle in Time. And they're supposed to be kind of a mini. We'll see. With my green thumb, things that are supposed to be tiny end up not being so tiny. But they're supposed to be curly, and they're supposed to be the um, clumping style. So they should spread very readily. All right. And then here, here is the whole garden that's probably about 75 by 75 right now and then of course cut to an angle all right guys well if you like the video give me a muddy thumbs up and if you're not a member of my worm family click that subscribe button and if you want to know what i'm doing when i'm doing it ring that bell icon all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my garden and everybody have a good day